A lot of the thought process behind this is very instinctual. When you discover what the right music is and then you look at it and you say, oh, that's why this worked. I think it's important to always follow things from that almost like physical emotional place as opposed to being too intellectual about where things go. Let's talk about the score for season two. You know, it, it was a big thought process um, because this is the first television series that I've had the opportunity to score and also the first time I've had a season two to think about. The early conversations that I had with Jesse were really brainstorming kind of like, what are the ways to link us with season one? Because there are certain chords and certain melodies and themes that feel like they've become very connected to our characters. But at the same time, I think instinctively for me, I always want to evolve things. And I always want to make sure that the music is developing with our story and with where, we're, where we are going. So uh, it was felt Sandy, Stewie and Maysbury Capital wouldn't proceed with their bit without you, but they have gone public with a bear hug. And... When season two begins, Kendall Roy is in a pretty dark, melancholic kind of a state. And I wanted to come up with a theme that could encapsulate that emotion, but also somehow over the course of the series, connect back to the main theme of the show. Hey, Rhea. Hey, it's Kendall Roy again. And over the course of season two, that theme now takes many different variations. My instinct was actually to say, like, what if we imagine this show kind of as a symphony? And what if this is like the second movement of a symphony? If you go back to the classical era, symphonies would have specific movements and each one would have its own character. And at times, a second movement might have a more melancholic or a darker kind of a contemplative feel to it. And so the first two things actually that I wrote, I wrote one piece, which I called Rondo in mm -hmm. F minor. And I wrote the Concerto Grosso, which concludes the whole season. Mr. Wood. Do you have anything to say to the victims of these crimes? Did your father know you were making this statement today? The Concerto Grosso was Baroque. In season one, I was leaning into this late 1700s classical set of styles. The Baroque concept is about 100 years earlier than that, mm -hmm. let's say. Uh, and so it's an even earlier, in some ways I feel it has a more almost like kind of ancient sound to our ears today. And for me, that felt like it was going into a more austere, dark place. The thing that I really enjoyed was in season one, the realization that the show had this dual tonality. It wasn't just serious and it also wasn't just absurd. It's something that that every moment of the show, it's a, it's a question, like what is the right feel for any moment? And it, and it takes a lot of time and thought and discussion. Actually, the Boar on the Floor is a good one where my instinct initially was very dark. Boar on the Floor. <laughs> hey, it's a game in the corner, over there, stand there, go, 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 go! I remember Jesse's note back was, I think this is way, way too far. <laughs> you know, it just, it just felt like way too overbearing. So I pulled it back a bit because in this case, it's very much about dialing things in, you know, and the comedy, I think, often for me does come from the perspective of maybe veering even more into seriousness. Funny music for me isn't funny inside the music, let's say. You know, if music starts to sound funny, I actually think that's not that funny. But specifically for this show, funny for me is when the music is uber serious. And that's kind of the spectrum that I go on. Yeah, it could have stole my sausage! <laughs> Too effing slow. It's interesting for me because I'm always thinking about character, but at the same time, I never feel that themes should be restricted to individual characters because stories evolve and also more and more over time, I feel that music is really more about relationships between characters than it is about characters in and of themselves. I always think when we hear a theme, it should be about telling us something about 
the nature, the dynamics around that character. I think for me, the really exciting thing has been exploring the dual tonality of the show, exploring the gravitas and the absurdity and kind of seeing and imagining the ways that the music can also tell that story. <laughs>